Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Zimmerman and you have tuned in to part two of my Cycle Network tour in the city of Santa Barbara with staff members Jessica Grant and Derek Bailey. I hope you enjoy the ride. So far, the road is quite a bit longer. Mm -hmm. The lanes were quite a bit wider. You think it's high speed now, you should have seen it a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what was the configuration a couple years ago here? Uh, wide shoulders and really wide uh, one lane in each direction plus a center turn lane. Oh really? Okay, so it was only one lane in each direction? Yeah. Wow, okay. We uh, carved out the space for the path by yeah. taking all the lanes down to 10 feet. Yeah. And in some cases here, eliminating the center turn lane where it wasn't needed. Yeah. Uh, still maintaining wide bike lanes on the street. Just right. Because some of our more confident cyclists, the higher speed ones, they like to be on the street instead of on the path. Yeah, yeah. And that's, there, there's a good good precedent for doing that. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. That that's fabulous. for everybody. So really this was a little bit probably easier to pull off because you didn't really have a lane reduction. Right. So right. that was good, there's yeah. There's still some skepticism in the community. Oh, sure, sure. For, uh, <laughs> before it went in, but... Well, change is hard. <laughs> change is hard, but after they saw it, it all made sense. Yeah. Yeah, this is fantastic. We were wondering, we were debating about that when we were driving it yesterday. We were like, I wonder if this was a lane reduction. And it was like, no, nope, uh, it wasn't. <laughs> that's good to hear. There's a few spots, like up here, you can see the center turn lane disappeared. Yes. And that's because we swung the... Uh, Alignment to the path kind of shifts to the right a little bit to yeah. avoid some of these trees. Yeah. But there's no driveway access here, so why did we need the space? Right, exactly. And we're really excited when all these oak trees start growing up in a few years and really start creating a nice canopy over the entire roadway. Yeah, it's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. And on these oaks, is this, you know, similar to the, uh, the you know, sort of native California oak species that are in this area? There's two different oak trees on these corridors. One, one's a coastal live oak and mm -hmm. the other's a island live oak. Okay. But yes, na native to California. So nice to have that opportunity to get, you know, some of that natural, Definitely. you know, yeah. foliage back in. On this side of the road was really missing a tree canopy to begin with. Right. So it's a nice way to balance it out too, because obviously the other side of the street has a nice, yeah. well-developed canopy separating the road from the freeway and the railroad tracks. And I love it too. We're passing a retirement community building right here in development. We've passed some other multifamily uh, spaces here. So having an all ages and abilities facility like this is so important. Yes. Mm -hmm. path, uh, which is really exciting. And then we, there's lots of um, seniors that walk uh, along this as yeah. well. And it's just so exciting. This neighborhood's uh, called Hidden Valley yeah. neighborhood. And, and really the residents were always hidden. We couldn't see anybody because there wasn't any uh, infrastructure yeah. uh, for the residents to experience. So our, our Hidden Valley residents are no longer hidden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They can come out and, and really enjoy the corridor without being in a car. Yeah, they can come out and play now. Yeah, it's really exciting. <laughs> and, but then also, you know, plenty of single family homes, you know, here too. So again, great access for, you know, the kids and the families yeah, to yeah. be able to get out. Ah, look at this. So okay. this section right here um, was an extension that we just recently completed. Okay. Like it's still technically under construction right, right now. Right, right. Um, but this was a last connection to, to then hit our unincorporated county line. Of course, we're all in the county, but right, right. Um, and the county fortunately received an active transportation grant to connect from our path up all the way to the Auburn Trail. So they broke their project up into a couple phases. And okay. They, they just recently completed their phase. And we had a gap between their project and our the project that we just uh, rode right now. Right. And, and so this is the, the remaining part of the city's project. And okay. you can see there's a huge 
uh, ravine here, so we needed to have um, good guardrails uh, here. Oh, right, yeah. We, we just left the city, and now we're in unincorporated county. Unincorporated county, so yeah. This is the county's uh, the first phase of their project. Fantastic. Get out to the urban trail. And what's, how is the county structured in terms of their ability to deliver this? Is this just kind of done under a, a, a public works, you know, umbrella or do they have like an entire active transportation they planning have, group? Uh, they also have a similar to ours where they have a, a transportation and engineering and, mm -hmm. um, and active transportation team. Uh, again, we're all small and mighty. Yeah, yeah. So, and and so, yeah, this is their, their first phase of their project yeah. with the active transportation ramp. So what you're riding along here is part of the 30 mile coast ramp between Ventura uh, all the way out to Goleta at UCSD. Okay. So this is not only like a great local connection, uh, but a regional connection as well. And through time, we're hoping that a 30 mile route will be Ages and right. Well, it certainly is in this part. Yeah. And this is, uh, this is <laughs> yeah. a game changer because the, the roadway speeds are just so high um, right in this section, which makes uh, a lot of commuting, a lot of residents here uh, go out to UCSB for jobs or right. to all the tech companies out there in Goleta and vice versa. There's a lot of Goleta residents that work. Um, uh, in the city of Santa Barbara, and so we are we're over time changing our a high stress route into a very enjoyable one. Yeah, yeah. Yep, this is fantastic. And is this still considered the Modoc? Yes, on this? this is part of the Modoc okay. path. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and, and stop at this stop sign. Mm -hmm. This is where this it, is where it ends. ends yeah. to go back to on street bike path. We're probably about, I want to say it's probably another half a mile to get you to the Oberon Trail, okay. which is quite lovely. It's my favorite. I just love, love, love it. And, yeah, I think I saw and, the trailhead uh, yesterday. I when highly we went here. recommend yeah. um, riding that. It's uh, a mix. But there's one kind of bike friendly street connection, but the rest of it's all off street path as well. Yeah. So that's what um, this next phase will connect into. Uh, they're having a little bit of just trouble during the design on, on path alignment mm -hmm. and uh, the controversy is uh, tree mm -hmm. removal, some yeah. trees, and, and then the right of way. So they're hoping yeah. to see um, if they can design to, you know, with minimize the amount of uh, tree removal. Yeah, 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 that's always a challenge. Yeah. Now I noticed a little bit of difference in the texture of some of that concrete back there that was used. Was that a permeable uh, concrete? Yeah, so if you even further back, the asphalt section, that mm -hmm. was permeable asphalt. Oh, it's permeable asphalt, yeah, okay. So that was Great. kind of the first project. And mm -hmm. then that short extension mm -hmm. across the road, Yeah. Uh, that was a permeable uh, concrete. Yeah. And then when we came into the county, they have different stormwater treatment right from us so, yeah yeah uh, they didn't use the permeable concrete but yeah uh, for such a small section yeah uh, it didn't make sense to get permeable asphalt yeah it's yeah a, you have to mix that up in big batches special yeah mix, yeah big batch. yeah, yeah. So for the uh, yeah. phase one of the path it was over two and a half miles long and made a lot yeah. of sense yeah um, so anyways. yeah and i i know yeah. I'd like to hear your experience on which surface you like the best. Um, I tend to like the asphalt mm -hmm. as a user uh, yeah. and then as a runner yeah. and, and walking there's a little yeah. give on the permeable yeah. asphalt yeah. But, but then from a maintenance perspective then concrete yeah. Yeah. Is, is better. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's what we're weighing as we yeah. design some of our new paths. I'm partial to whatever's smooth. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that's what it was. Uh, As a person on a bike, and oftentimes on a bike with too high of uh, PSI on the the tires for a rough surface, I'm like, yes. yeah, I, I keep it smooth. But yeah. uh, beggars can't be choosers. So, Don't yeah, no, this is fantastic, guys. Yeah.
to see this portion of the multi-use path and you'll see here that we didn't have enough roadway for the separation so we have the vehicle crash detection barrier here okay um, areas. This, this was the, the section that we're riding now um there was nothing easy about the design okay here. Uh, big topographical constraints on both sides of the roadway with the creek being to our right um, and then very steep topography on the left hand side right uh, but yes this is one of our vision zero projects we did have a collision um uh, for speed and really the only way along this very uh high speed corridor was to separate the cyclists and pedestrians from the roadway right um, uh, but we still do again for the Confident cyclists, we still have on street uh, bike facilities as well. But right. when we were we did the repaving for this, we were able to add in um, buffers to the roadway striping. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. I mean, there's yeah. there's no reason that you know there shouldn't be uh, you know both because mm -hmm. for sure, I mean, for that confident cyclist, maybe they are over here when they're with their their, right. their little daughter. But right. you know, <laughs> otherwise, you know, yeah. maybe they're fine over yeah. there. So. Yeah. We finally had rain this year, so we're seeing a lot of <laughs> growth, and we had to do a lot of mitigation too. But yeah, we need to. As I'm, I'm like, we have to do some cleanup on this path. Yeah. Um, but this is one section that's just beautiful because we were able to yeah preserve all of the existing oak trees right in this yeah. one section here. Yeah, it's um, so special to have this canopy yeah. through here. Yeah. Especially during the hot days of summer. Yeah. Is, yeah, to the right, it's a mix between a foot control, a channel, and then it uh, opens up to a natural ice uh, creek. Yeah, yeah. So we try to do little things like just make sure the push yeah. buttons and everything's yeah. spot for bikes. And this is an example of like the high visibility mm -hmm. crosswalks. Very nicely done. So coming up on our left hand side is Ealings Park and that's a regional park mm -hmm. uh, facility and the only regional park. This area you can tell is pretty natural and so a lot of the public input that we had during the design process was minimize the light. Got it. So there isn't corridor lighting, but there are these uh, smaller lights at all the conflict points just to make sure nice. it's safe at night time. All right, we're going to keep our fingers crossed that we've got yes. a good bike for you. <laughs> Again, quite and new. It's been a long yeah. time need since the 1970s. Yes, yeah. And, uh, Which, if I remember from your interview, yeah. that was kind of when the uh, bike plan was done, was yes, in the 70s. The bike plan. Yeah. Yes. And so, but it became a reality when. Oh, wait, here's our yeah connection to the open space area. Ah, fabulous. Which is quite lovely. Very nice. A nice little walking path. Okay. A little bit too uh, thick of sand to bike on it. And Got it. You have like a mountain bike. But... Right, right. But yeah, this all used to be owned by Caltrans, so it was really designed. As oh, a really? Holiday. Yes. It, oh, it, wow. It was relinquished to the city um, in 2014. Okay. 
just right as the active transportation grant was getting our uh, program was getting online okay and uh so we submitted a grant to investigate planning and design of this path wow go after construction funding because we had yeah. no idea yeah yeah how much this would cost yeah um, and so we were able to get in on the first round of the program Roundabout, yeah, to the cliff roundabout, and that was the first project to come in once the this whole corridor was really cool. Now, as a fan of uh, protected bike and pedestrian priority roundabouts uh, from the Dutch perspective, I'm yeah. going to be interested to see how this works. So, yeah. this is good. So, we're still building some of the, the pieces to it, we're, we're going to go ahead and stop right now. If we kept going this way, we would mm -hmm. be at the Aurora Borough County Beach, also known as Henry's Beach. Henry's, yeah. 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 And then we have in design a nice, um, we'll be installing rapid flashing beacons mm -hmm. at that um, intersection to get uh, residents right to the beach. Okay. And so another get big thing is that most people could only drive right. to this beach. And right. now they're able to walk, uh, walk and bike it. So it's yeah, yeah. exciting. So then the phase two, the, yeah, the, the grand um, cliff drive as we go up the hill. So we're gonna have, that's currently just started design and then we're having mm -hmm. a workshop on it this Wednesday. And it's for a 3.1 uh, protected bike path. For okay. 3.1 miles. Most of it's all uh, where there's existing sidewalks and it's a separated bike path. But there's a couple sections, um, actually just one section that is a multi-use path. Okay. And I don't know. Yeah. So that's that's our the next four years of our life. Yes. Is, is designing this piece. So it's it's really really exciting. So yeah. maybe when you're out here again, uh, construction's yeah. estimated in 20. Gosh, where are we at? 2027. Now you had mentioned that some of it you try to design and engineer in house, and then some you try to farm out is, is that kind of what you're dealing yeah, so with this, on these this one we yeah. uh, are having a consulting team okay uh, work on this one uh, we feel pretty good about yeah. the concept design and mm -hmm. we did the concept yeah. design in-house yeah. yeah okay so spatially we know it works traffic yeah safety everything we know it's going to work it's just yeah. we need a, a consultant team that has um yeah. More bandwidth to put the plans and specs together. Has the funding already been identified yep. as well yeah. for construction? This one is yeah, active transportation program as well. Okay. So, um, and then we had to do a 20% match with city money. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have very limited money outside of maintaining existing infrastructure. Right. So yeah. we can only do projects if they're grant funded. And right. what the remaining money that we have, um, then we'd like to leverage it yeah. Yeah, to get these uh, larger transformative projects. So this will be about a 30, $33 million uh, Okay. Project. Okay, yeah. Very nice. Nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And and just sitting here, you know, by by this uh, this roundabout here, it's I, I noticed the design very nice. You've got a little uh, area here where you can have a, a a car be able to queue up and wait if you've got you know somebody on bikes or walking through here. So yeah, and not and not have to impede the the travel of the anybody else in the circle. So yeah. yes, good job. Mainly one side of the street. Yeah. Um, and so cyclists will be able to come in and connect this. Way yeah, yeah, there. yeah. No, that that totally makes sense with what you've got going on. And I'm assuming you'll continue to preserve the ability for the on-road cyclists if they prefer to be in the travel lane, yes. be able to go up. So yeah, that makes complete sense. You've got your all ages and abilities in combination with those roadies that are confident yep. out there. So, That's what we want to be. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Okay, time to climb back up this hill on the Las Positas road path, heading back towards the city center. Yeah, now it's starting to become the, the season with the winter time with the waves. Oh yeah. Yeah, I just, I really love the, the you know, rain garden treatments that are along the sides here too. Is that yeah. something that the city is really 
striving to do is make sure that there's you know anything you guys do has has that. We have very strict uh, stormwater okay. policy. Yes. Yeah. So thanks for that, and I think yeah, what we struggle with, and also just um, yeah, introducing more trees to this area. Yeah. But yeah, we struggle with having just, just the right amount of vegetation um, without it having to be a complete maintenance nightmare. Yeah. Well. Yeah, and that's one of the things where you're like, okay, we, we need to be kind of thoughtful about what vegetation we put in. Uh, you know, depending on the year, you're also dealing right. with the lack of drought. rainfall and drought. Uh, but at the same time, really really critical to have you know that ability to absorb when right. you do have rain right. so yeah and we're i know we went through got almost a decade of drought here yeah and last season was really the first time it really rained significantly so again for the planting and the spacing of the planting that it's not so dense that And a nice crossing here. Right here. Yeah. yeah, this is kind of just a little small little subdivision. And okay. This is their only way in and out. So yes, now they have a nice crossing. Connecting to this path. Yeah, and a lot of it is for, it's just all, all about choices. And that's yeah. what we try to give our residents. Um, that you don't always have to be in your car yep. um, when you leave your home. Uh, you know, ideally that you always have a choice to either walk on the sidewalk or, or ride or walk a multi-use path or hop into a bike lane. Uh, something for everyone. Yeah, yeah. So I see that we have some sign wayfinding over there. Yes. So I assume you'll have some over here um, for the pathway eventually. Eventually we're we're in the midst. Those signs date back probably 20 years now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and so we're actually about to have a meeting on that to uh, kind of overhaul our yeah. regional signage and sort of a new a new yeah. fresh look and everything yeah and uh, just because a lot of it between the county and our adjacent jurisdictions our bike infrastructure has been changing so much so right we're first trying to get all the gis up to date we right we did that for ours uh, and then we're going to look to do a whole uh, signage yeah reboot but we yeah we struggle with that as well like right now all of our signage is just say bike route <laughs> right yeah yeah and um and keep it simple it is helpful, I think, and if you're commuting or how much is it a mile or a half a mile into town, yeah. um, those types of things. So I think that's the next uh, that yeah. we try to seek some uh, funding for. And because when you think of our transportation systems, that you, I'm sure you within the city, but yeah, they're very much connected to right. adjacent. Right, all your adjacent, and, yeah, municipalities and, and areas, and so yeah. So for a cyclist, you need to ideally have that as a seamless uh, transition. So again, our protected bike lane will be on that side. Okay, protected and, bike lane. Yeah. Will That's it? what we really struggled with, is what side you put it on. Um, what we were trying to preserve is these wonderful, these are jacaranda trees. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Springtime. Yeah. And so, uh, again, it's always as we go more south, we had some more intersection conflicts. So that's right. what was the, the cider to have the uh, protected on the okay. other side of the So protected on the other side. Will it, will it be a lane in the roadbed or will it be uh, raised up to... We're raised up. Okay, raised up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, right here, there's that Pilgrim Terrace. There's an, um, a freeway overcrossing to get into the Oak Park neighborhood. Oh, oh which okay. Is our, but, um, level three trauma facility, Cottage Hospital. It's the only one in our entire region. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, it's a huge employer uh, within the city. And so Westside residents that work over in any of the medical facilities can um, get into town that way. Yeah. Beautiful little building. Yeah. 
So, and then this will actually be um, a multi-use path on this side as well. Okay. Leading into the school. And the Very nice. Yeah, coming to the school, entering right here. Okay. The big parking area. So we're gonna hang a left right at this street. It's called the Let's See. I know where we're going. <laughs> this is beautiful. We yeah. we tripped our way into this uh, yesterday. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so look at this. A nice um, for kids coming to school. Yeah. Um, vehicles cannot make a right here. Okay. And so that's what keeps the traffic volumes uh, lower. Very nice. And we have the skips, the conflict striping, just yeah. for kids to learn how to properly align themselves to the intersection. Yeah. So coming up, this is our, like, it's called a landscape peninsula. Okay. And this one just has one, on, but it, it, eventually this would be a canopy tree. Okay. And to, again, to have cars go a little bit slower. Yeah. I, I like that terminology. Did you guys uh, trademark that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we trademarked it, but we... <laughs> That's very creative. Yeah. I like that. And then here's more of the speed humps. So, okay, so this is uh, exciting. This is, yeah, this one's really cool. Derek Bailey design. Uh, Woohoo! <laughs> So a fire truck can come through here. Okay, fire truck can come through. Yes, but, okay. But not for private vehicles. Yeah. I love the uh, the little stream little action tree, here. Tree gutter. This is fantastic. Was this fun to work on? Yeah. And it's surprisingly simple. Yeah. The concept. How did the neighborhood respond to this? I mean, do the residents kind of like it? I mean, other than the fact that some are probably... It was new. Yeah, I mean, some are, are probably kind of like a little weirded out by the change. But yeah. when you when you look at some of the transportation infrastructure that we have, you know, mm -hmm. choices to install, this is beautiful in addition to being yeah. functional. Uh, so. A wise old traffic engineer mentor yeah. early on in my career uh, said that I, I wish I could give everybody a dead-end street yeah as far as people living in a neighborhood um, just to uh, make it feel more like a neighborhood so um, you know not everybody on this street cycles but I think everybody sure. appreciates uh, how quiet their street is now right and uh, you know there was some initial apprehension sure. definitely and from the parallel streets and rightfully so you know they were sure. concerned what was going to happen on their street but um, nothing's blown up yeah you know, everything everything's working fine yeah. yeah I think it's initially and then when you've been turning a certain way with your car for 20 years right and then you cannot yeah that it just takes an adjustment yeah but the adjustments in a vehicle are you know underneath a minute versus yeah. uh, now having a safe route to um, school for all the yeah. families that live along here and this this connects uh, two elementary schools and a junior high yeah on this route yeah i mean it, it is all relative when you when you talk about you know the fact that if it's changed it, there's going to be that adjustment mm -hmm. but you know, comparatively speaking, if you're just using lighter, quicker, cheaper materials and it's kind of ugly, then you also get those complaints of saying, this yeah. is really trashy, yeah. this is really ugly. At least, you know, you know, one thing can be done. You guys have put together just an amazing, um, oh, you know, you. mobility filter here. So this we, is uh, really nice. We have a little saying, Santa Barbara style infrastructure. Yeah. And so it needs to meet our community's expectation for how it looks and feels. Yeah. I. I can't argue with that that's for sure beautiful thank you bravo yeah. well done uh, I did a long thing, uh, uh, helping with some of our vision zero collision statistic data oh, perfect and creating a, uh, a dashboard region wide and we have a we just recently up, um, updated our vision zero site but hopefully okay. more is coming where we actually have a data dashboard okay we have a nice uh, race crossing into the school yeah 
Now, does UCSB have a degree program sort of in this realm? The, the closest of, it's where I'm a graduate of is in environmental studies okay. um, for undergraduate. And then I also have the Donald Brin School of Environmental Science and Management. Okay. Um, through there, you have a lot of just environmental and land use related okay. learning. Um, most of my transportation expertise came just, yeah. Um, learning on the job. Yeah. So my yeah, my background is city planning and okay. environmental. Yeah. Uh, really having nice uh, crossings along the main street. Absolutely critical. Yeah. The new yeah crossing that we had. project the okay. highway safety improvement program so a lot of, like Derek is uh, like a lot of uh, intersection specific uh, mm -hmm. where we have collision patterns and then and then corridor uh, specific as well right uh, right so this is one of the um, yeah. improvements All right. very cool and then once the, it's clear we'll go ahead Fantastic. Make them more comfortable for nighttime use. Yeah. So this is where we'll kind of weave into the new diverter. I love it. So is that the detection back there? No, we just got okay. there at the right time. Okay. I'm just yeah. No, it is. A, so, sometimes you that could very yeah, well be it. <laughs> these are all on a fixed cycle length though, so yeah. they coordinate well. Yeah. Yeah. This is where a lot of uh, festivals are during the, the summer months. Ah, okay. And this was paved just before Thanksgiving, so all the pavement markings have not been installed yet. Right. And then this is our other traffic diverter. Ah, very nice. That's the mirror image of the one we went through back at the university. Okay. And it looks like this was a bulb out as well here. And the curb lines. Oh, they're beautifully done. It's like the, the you know the, the most essential part of the you know bicycle streets, bike boulevards, feet struts, whatever you want to call them, is getting those modal filters in and decreasing the volume. <laughs> user comfort. Yeah. It's all about the user experience. Yeah. So it has not happened yet, but we'll be uh, changing the direction of the stop signs here. Okay. Installed lighting and curb extensions. This street that we're just entering right here is a little bit higher traffic volume okay. than the bike boulevard. So we are concerned about stop sign compliance. Okay. So just to uh, beef up the stop sign compliance, uh, yeah, we installed curb extensions and lighting just to try and make that approach feel a little bit narrower. Right. The street approach. Just yeah, to yeah. Kind of reinforce that this is where you need to stop. Yeah. Brilliant. Hey, well, that's all she wrote, folks. Uh, thank you once again to Jessica Grant and Derek Bailey for this fabulous tour of the emerging bicycle network there in Santa Barbara, California. And hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. Until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers.
And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.